The Flies would be best known for the late 90s hit Got You Where I Want You, which was heavily played on MTV and included in the film Disturbing Behavior. While they could be easily written off as a one-hit wonder, their frontmen have a truly fascinating history, starting with their family who was named by the New York Times as the first family of surfing. Today, let's take a look at the history of the Flies and whatever happened to the band and its members. The band The Flies would be led by brothers Adam and Joshua Paskowitz, who hailed from a huge family of nine siblings, eight brothers and one sister. Their mother would be an opera singer and their father Dorian Doc Paskowitz was a Stanford-educated graduate physician. Despite being a successful doctor and having more than enough money, he still wasn't happy in life. He would initially get married twice, with one marriage resulting in two daughters. He spent time surfing locales like California, Hawaii and Israel. It was following his return from Israel by the middle of the century he wanted to devote his life to surfing. It was after Dorian married his third wife, Juliet, with whom he had nine children, he realized he couldn't properly spend time with his family working in a typical work setting. He would spend the next two and a half decades living in a camper van traveling throughout the coasts of America and Mexico, revealing in the documentary Surfwise, I don't care about being a great doctor or a rich person or a celebrity or anything else. I just wanted to be a good husband and a good father, and thus a good man. Paskowitz's children would be homeschooled with a bulk of their education coming from books and real-life experiences on the road. The family would take the bare minimum they needed to survive, rejecting materialism and eating only real food and surfing. His son Joshua would tell the Morning Call newspaper about his dad. He had his own practice. He was like the head of infectious diseases in Hawaii. He was married twice before he got married to my mom. And before he had my first brother, he was already 37 years old. So he had been there, kind of, and done that. He had gone down the road of, like, having breakfast with the governor of Hawaii every morning. And he had a very successful practice and a reasonably happy family kind of environment. But he felt like he wasn't really living life to its fullest. I think he had some bad experiences with his ex-wives. And then he kind of just like said, it, let's go surfing. Dorian would make money on the road working at low-income hospitals in Mexico and the States and writing articles for Surfer Magazine where he preached about living a healthy and clean life. It was in 1972, Dorian set up one of the nation's best-known surfing schools in California called the Paskowitz Surf Camp. They would soon expand to Mexico and it would be run by his children with his one son Israel, in the late 90s being a national longboarder champion, while the Flies frontman Adam would be a junior champion. But life on the road as a kid proved to be really difficult. During their time in Mexico, Doc's son Joshua witnessed a man shot to death, while another would be stabbed. He would also come down with rabies needing to get 14 needles to the spine and was at one point attacked by scorpions. On top of those misfortunes, not having a steady group of friends or even experiencing what a lot of kids go through resulted in Joshua leaving the family at age 12. But things didn't get better for him. Living homeless around Southern California, he would befriend some kids who played in bands in school while also having a chilly relationship with his family. Josh would tell the morning call, I wanted all the things normal kids had and it almost killed me. I was really bad. I had a terrible problem doing drugs and violence and all kinds of stuff for 10 years. It was at a school dance Joshua picked up a microphone for the first time playing to a crowd giving him his first sense of what it was like to be a performer. His older brother Adam, meanwhile, would start a band called The Flies in 1994. He would hook up with bassist James Book, drummer Nicky Lucero, and guitarist Peter Perdiskitsi, whom he met in the early 80s after moving from the East Coast to Los Angeles. Hair metal was popular then and proved to be a big influence on the budding musicians. Adam would tell MTV, I was 12 years old in Madison Square Garden and Motley Crue opened for Ozzy. After that, I just friggin lost it. I've been trying every form of metal for the past 10 years, and nine years ago I met James. We played a while, then I just went back to surfing. It would be years later he reconvened with James and formed The Flies. In 1995, The Flies would release their first album, 25 Cents, which sold about 25,000 copies. Adam would tell The Morning Call. We basically were touring behind The Flies' first album, 25 Cents, for about three years and just selling those CDs from hand to hand. We played pretty much every dump and dive and squatter's shack in the country and in Europe. I think really tenacity is what has helped this band get this far. We just didn't give up. Something was bound to happen. 
It would be around 1995 or 1996 that Joshua soon started living with older brother Adam in LA, who was a teetotaler and a good influence on him. Adam asked Joshua to be the band's roadie and do some artwork for them as well. Joshua would admit to launch that it helped him clean up his act and soon enough became a member of the band. Becoming a co-vocalist in Rhymus telling Launch, I was probably the first person to join a rock band to get off drugs. By 1997, the band struck up a relationship with producer and masters of reality guitarist Chris Goss, who liked the flies so much he offered to work with the group. He would end up producing their follow-up 1998's Holiday Man. The album's lyrics would take inspiration from Adam's dating life with him telling Billboard, Most of the songs were inspired by my dating the Wicked Witch of the West. You think you're Joe Cool until you get knocked on your ass. Adam Paskowitz would tell Pause and Play in 1998. Then we make a record that doesn't cost anything. We make it at his studio in Palm Springs. It takes a month. Mike Ross, the guy from Delicious Vinyl who has no money, he says, we'll print up some singles and we'll see what happens. We get a couple of spins on some radio stations. And from that minute on, within three days, almost every major record company called us. Within three days, I was in Rob Kahane's office at Trauma Records and that was it. He said, look, you can get a deal with a big advance from another company, or I can do this now. We looked at each other, thinking about No Doubt and Bush, and the way he handled those bands. It felt like he knew what he was doing. And he was smart. In a separate interview with MTV News, Adam would add that Trauma Records gave the band a lot of creative freedom as well. The release of Holiday Man would be a joint venture by Trauma and Delicious Vinyl. That song that got the band the attention of major labels would be the track Gods of Basketball, which according to MTV News started getting airplay on local LA stations Y107 and KROQ. Their album Holiday Man was an eclectic mix of rap, metal, and funk, and would be notable because of Adam's vocals using a vocal distortion generator called Paskowitz Nebulizer. MTV would describe it as creating an otherworldly effect, something like the sound of high-pitched Alice in Chains crooner Lane Staley in an echo chamber or Perry Farrell growling on helium. The band soon started gaining traction on MTV and rock radio, thanks to the single Got You Where I Want You, which peaked at number eight on the mainstream rock charts. The song would be inspired by one of Adam's friends who was trying everything to get the number of an attractive woman at a bar. The song would be licensed for the Katie Holmes and James Marsden film Disturbing Behavior and featured both actors in the music video. The band differed from other rock stars because they didn't really have a professional image as their members were made up of surf rats, skydiving maniacs, and mountain bikers, who often referred to themselves as homeless James Bonds, living life out of a van. In fact, the man on the cover of the album, Holiday Man, is drummer Nicky Lucero. The band soon got opportunities including opening for Lenny Kravitz and the Rolling Stones with Adam, adding to pause and play. All these bands like Hole and Lenny Kravitz, they're really professional business people. Don't let them fool you. They shine like a new penny. But the flies were more like fringe people who just wrote a song. We don't shine up like the others. Maybe it's the thing that catapults us into greatness, or maybe people will go, ah, this band, they just don't have it. Their album Holiday Man peaked at number 109 on the Billboard album charts. The band would follow up Holiday Man with 2000s Out of My Way. That was a commercial disappointment and didn't chart. The band soon called it quits by 2002 before briefly reforming in 2006. The Paskowitz brothers would bring in some new musicians, including actor Jordan Lawson, who told PR Newswire why the reunion was short-lived, saying, I got with those guys back in 2006. It was fun, and I already knew who they were from back when I was a teenager. We played shows around LA for a while, and we're going to be writing some new tunes at the time, but we ended up moving forward with other projects and goals. I think we all knew what it was and what it could be, and I think the lead singer wanted to branch out and do his own thing. I had to respect that. In 2007, a documentary would be released titled Surfwise, which chronicled the Paskowitz father and family during their nomadic days. Their father would pass away in 2014. These days, Adam is married, has kids who he homeschools, and surfing is still a big part of his life, in addition to traveling and environmental conservation. He lives his life in a very similar way his father did. In 2019, it was reported he had inked a television deal to shoot a show about his life on the sea with his wife and family. His brother Josh, meanwhile, is an artist in California. That does it for today's video, folks. Thanks for watching, and if you like to see more cool rock and roll stories, hit the subscribe button.